Hello and welcome to another array processing video. This video briefly discusses some features of the conventional beam pattern for a uniform line array that has uniform weighting. So specifically we're going to talk a little bit about main lobe width, grading lobes, the definition of the visible region, and spatial aliasing. So let's get started. In a previous video we derived the beam pattern for an N sensor uniform line array with spacing D and as a function of the vertical wave number KZ. Um, so, and remember KZ, the way we've defined it, is 2 pi F0 over C, where F times cosine theta. F0 is the center frequency of the narrow band plane wave. C is the propagation speed. Theta is the angle of arrival with respect to the um, Z axis. This can also be written as minus 2 pi over lambda cosine theta because lambda is the wavelength is defined as c over f0. So in the previous video we derived the beam pattern and the magnitude of that beam pattern is equal to sine of kz dn over 2 over sine of kz d over 2. Um, and this is a discrete sync function. It's, uh, it repeats at multiples of 2 pi over d. 2 pi over d is the spatial sampling frequency. And this expression assumes that we've, we have a uniform weighting, so that all the sensors are weighted equally and the weight vector is normalized by a factor of 1 over n, which guarantees unity gain. And we know that the rules for uh, spatial sampling say that we won't have aliasing as long as the sample spacing d is less than half the wavelength, so less, d is less than lambda over 2. So let's see a couple of examples of beam patterns that we compute this way, and we'll point out some of the essential features. So let's see an example for a specific set of parameters. In this example, we're assuming we have five sensors. The center frequency F0 is 75 hertz. We have a propagation speed of 1500 meters per second, which gives us a wavelength of 20 meters. We're assuming a sample spacing of 5 meters, which is less than half the wavelength, so we don't expect any aliasing. We've assumed a uniform weighting, which means that the beamformer is steered to um, kz equals 0. All right, so our steering direction is marked by the dash dot line here on the plot, um, meaning that that's where the main lobe shows up. The main lobe is centered at the steering direction, in this case kz equals 0, and it goes between um, the two zero crossings on either side of the peak. The peak is at 1, and there, these are the two zero crossings. And we know from our previous analytical work that they show up at plus and minus 2 pi over dn. 2 pi over dn in our case is 0.08 pi, if we plug in the numbers that we're using here. So we see that, and that's what we expect. Uh, we know that for this discrete sync function that we have, we will get copies at integer multiples of the sample frequency, the spatial sample frequency. The spatial sample frequency in this case is 2 pi over d. 2 pi over d for our example is 0.4 pi. So every 0.4 pi we will get copies of that main lobe. And those copies are called grading lobes. So that's a grading lobe, that's a grading lobe. These two peaks are also called grading lobes. They're the copies, okay? And they show up at every 2 pi over d. And those copies continue. If we were to plot beyond this for additional values of kz, uh, we would see copies out to infinity on either side. So those are the grading lobes. It's important that we sketch those because they're going to help us pick up when we have aliasing. In this case, we don't have any aliasing because we've met the spatial sample frequency. Well, how can we tell that? Um, well, it's important also uh, to look at where the visible region is. So where are the propagating signals? Where would they live in this plot? Well, they live between plus and minus 2 pi over lambda because that's the min and the max values of kz that can correspond to propagating plane waves. If we plug in for our value of lambda here, that means those are values between minus 0.1 pi and plus 0.1 pi. 
So I could sketch the visible region on here. And the visible region, here's point, minus point 0.2 and 0, so it's about halfway. So I can sketch, and it's about halfway here. So this is the visible region, right? And I've marked that because I know how to compute where the visible region is. I use, I look between plus and minus 2 pi over lambda. Okay, that's the visible region. We didn't expect any aliasing, that's good, and we don't have any aliasing because none of these copies show up in the visible region. Um, we would be disturbed if those copies showed up in the visible region because that would mean that um, our filter, our spatial filter, remember the beam pattern is the spatial frequency response, could be letting more than one propagating signal through, right? The main lobe or anything close to one is what's passing the propagating signals. Luckily, we don't have any grading lobes in the visible region, so we know we don't have aliasing, certainly for this steering angle. So let's take a look now at what happens when we steer this particular beamformer to a different angle. So first what we have to remember is that steering shifts the beam pattern. Steering, if we steer the beamformer, we have to change the weight vector. We change the weight vector by changing the, um, the replica we use to design that weight vector. When we have a beamformer steered to broadside, the weight vector is simply 1 over n times v of 0, where v is the narrowband replica um, evaluated when kz is equal to 0. And so that's the set of phase shifts um, that correspond to that broadside angle. Okay, um, if we want to steer to n fire, all right, n fire in this case is when... Um, we have kz is equal to 0.1 pi, or 2 pi over lambda, right? We're at that maximum. Remember, we can steer between, uh, our values of theta can take on values between 0 degrees and pi degrees, right? And so that's what gets us to either plus and minus um, kz equal plus or minus uh, 0.1 pi. All right, so we're steering to n fire, okay? If we steer to n fire, then our weight vector is 1 over n times v of 0.1 pi. Um, and that, all that does is shift the beam pattern. Okay, so this was the first beam pattern I showed you on the previous slide. Now all I've done is shift this beam pattern over, okay, to where now the main lobe is centered, right? So that's the main lobe, and the main lobe is centered at 0.1 pi, right? I'm, keep in mind um, all of these I'm plotting as a function of kz divided by pi here. All right, so this is the main lobe. It got shifted to where I'm steering, okay? Um, and all that did was it took this plot and shifted everything over by um, 0.1 pi to the right, okay? I still have grading lobes. Here are my grading lobes. They still show up, okay? but none of them shift into the visible region, okay? I still don't have any aliasing because no grading lobes are showing up in the visible region. Again, I didn't expect aliasing for this example because I know that D is less than half the wavelength. So I'm satisfying the spatial Nyquist theorem. I don't have a problem with aliasing. Let's see a different example now where we do expect aliasing and see what happens. So here's a second example. I'm using the same number of sensors. I'm using the same center frequency, the same um, propagation speed of 1500 meters per second, which means the wavelength is exactly the same. But now, instead of spacing those sensors apart by five meters, I'm spacing them every 15 meters. So I just spread my sensors farther apart. Now, spatial Nyquist is not being met, right? 15 meters is greater than lambda over 2. It's not less than lambda over 2. All right, so I do, I at least expect aliasing somewhere. So let's see what happens in this case. All right, so the first plot here shows when I'm steered to broadside. So this is broadside, right? My steering angle is here, so my main lobe is centered around kz equals 0. 
I've sketched where the visible region is. The visible region's in the same place. Remember, the visible region is determined by 2 pi over lambda. Lambda hasn't changed for this example, so it still lies between minus 0.1 pi and plus 0.1 pi, okay? But compared to the previous example, right, so my visible region's in the same place, but remember, the main lobe width has changed, right? 2 pi over nd is now different, right? Because I have a wider aperture array, right? Because I've spread my sensors out um, by a, a longer distance. Now the main lobe width is actually narrower than it was in the previous example, okay? It's still determined by 2 pi over nd, but 2 pi over nd is a different number than it was before. So, um, and this should have um, a pi here. Um, so, um, okay, so this was the case where I'm steered to broadside. Now let's take a look. Let's steer somewhere else, right? Let's shift over just a little bit, right? Let's steer a little bit off broadside. So I'm going to steer to this point here, right? Instead of at kz equals zero, I'm going to shift my main lobe to there. Well, what has happened? I'm still marking my visible region with these green dashed lines. The visible region doesn't shift. It stays in the same place all the time because it's just determined by 2 pi over lambda. Okay, but what's happened? As I took this beam pattern and shifted it to the right, now this grading lobe um, that was outside the visible region for this example now shifts right to the edge of the visible region. So in this case, I have aliasing because the grading lobe entered the visible region. Right? And when we say the grading lobe entered the visible region, we're really definitely talking about the peak, right? We, we care most about the peak because this, um, the, the peak shows, you know, this is equal to this, meaning that a signal coming from a direction associated with this wave number will get equal weighting to a signal coming through the main lobe, okay? So this is the main lobe here, and this is um, a grating lobe there, right? I have a grating lobe which entered the visible region, so I have aliasing in that example. I can shift it even farther if I want to shift now uh, to end fire. Now this case is steered to kz equal, the, the steering angle equal 0.1 pi, which is the end fire direction, right? Meaning it's um, coming down the array. Um, and when I do that, now that grading lobe just shifts, right? This is the grading lobe this is the main lobe. Um, the main lobe is right at the edge of the vi visible region. Now I have a grating lobe in here. Any propagating signal that has a wave number equal to, oh, I don't know, 0 .05, minus 0 0.05 pi here will get equal weighting coming through the beam former as anything in the desired steering direction. So I will have an ambiguity. I won't be able to tell the difference between signals um, propagating with this wave number and signals propagating with that wave number because I have both a grating lobe and a main lobe within my visible region. And this illustrates why we sometimes want to draw all of these copies. We could have just sketched our beam pattern so that we only showed the visible region but it was sketching the copies that made it easy to see when the grading lobe will shift into the visible region, right? Because this is the, the broadside beam pattern, and we just shift this over, right? And we can easily calculate when that grading lobe, because we know where that grading lobe is. That grading lobe is at minus 2 pi over d in this case, right? And then we're just going to shift it over. Um, and so sketching all the copies, being able to sketch all the copies in the beam pattern is helpful because it helps us figure out when those grading lobes will enter um, the visible region. So this array um, with this particular spacing
could be steered to a few angles, right? I could steer it a little ways to the right of, uh, of broadside here um, without this grating lobe entering the visible region. So I can steer it over a narrow set of angles and I do okay without a grating lobe in the visible region. Once I hit here, the grating lobe enters the visible region and I have aliasing in the beam pattern. So I hope this video has introduced you to some basic properties of the beam pattern, including the main lobe width, the grating lobes, visible region, um, and uh, a reminder about spatial aliasing. So if you want any more information, you can check out the other videos posted on YouTube or send me an email. Thanks for listening.